what is the image of the beast it is also called the image to the beast the image of the beast seems to be the image of a beast the beast is there and the image is there the beast is the real thing the image it's like a shadow of the real thing the beast with the two horns is also to say to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast and furthermore it is to command all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive the mark of the beast revelation 13 11 to 16 how are we to understand what the image of the beast is then to learn what the image is like and how it is to be formed we must study the characteristics of the beast itself purpose c when the holy church became corrupted by departing from the simplicity of the gospel and accepting heathen rites and customs she lost the spirit and power of god and in order to control the consciences of people she sought the support of the secular power the result was papacy a church that controlled the power of the state and employed it to further her own ends especially for the punishment of the heresy now we find papacy came as a result when the church sought the state power the following are the characteristics of papacy or the beast number one the beast comes out of the sea according to revelation 13 1 and the sea according to revelation 17 15 are many people number two the beast is made up of free beasts according to revelation 13 2 and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard and his feet was the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and a great authority now the three beasts the leopard bear and lion made up of the beast in revelation 13. now when you consider the lion which looks like the mouth of a lion represents the kingdom of babylon which primarily did image worship when you read Daniel chapter 3 shows Nebuchadnezzar made an image and commanded all men in his kingdom to worship the image the second was the bear which represented Medo Persia this represents infallibility or unchangeability when you read Daniel chapter 6 the decree of the Medes and Persia do not change. And the third, which looks like a leopard, represents Greece, which you read in Acts 17, represents philosophy and unchangeable character. According to the book of Jeremiah, the Bible asks, can a leopard change its spots? Number three, this beast gets his seat and authority from the fourth beast the dragon and the dragon gave his power and his seat and great authority who is the dragon and the dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived the old world he was cast into the earth and his angels were cast with him Revelation 12 9 so the dragon is Satan who is the devil number four the beast has a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies Revelation 13 5 and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies when you consider all these things what is blasphemy john 10 33 says the jews answered him saying for a good work we stone thee not but for blasphemy and because that thou being a man makest thyself god john 10 30 jesus had said i and the father are one and the jews understood that to mean god and they said christ had blasphemed by saying he and the father are one 
So the first thing we see, blasphemy is any man claiming to be God. Number five, the beast wars against the saints of the Most High, Revelation 13, 7. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, Daniel 7, 25. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, Daniel 7, 25 and 21. Number six, the beast has a worldwide authority. According to Revelation 13, verse 3 says, And all the world wandered after the beast. And Revelation 13, verse 7 says, And power was given him over all kindred and tongues and nations. So all the people around the world wander after the beast. Number 7, all the world will worship him. The beast of Revelation 13, 1, a leopard-like beast, will be worshipped by all people, all the world. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now here we learn that it's only those whose names are not written in the book of the Lamb of God which will worship the beast. And this beast shall change laws. The Ten Commandments will be broken. Daniel 7.25 tells us, And he shall think to change times and the laws, especially the Ten Commandments, and especially the Second Commandments which forbids image worship, and the Fourth Commandments which talks of the day of worship. Now, when the early church became corrupted by departing from the simplicity of the gospel, and accepting heathen rites and customs, she lost the spirit and power of God. And in order to control the consciences of the people, she sought the support of the secular power. The result was papacy, a church that controlled the power of the state and employed it to further her own ends, especially for the punishment of the heresy. The beast of papacy is the church controlling the state. In order for the United States to form an image of the beast, the religious power must so control civil governments that the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. Now, what is the image of the beast? The image of the beast represents that form of apostate Protestantism which will be developed when the Protestant churches shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogmas. The mark of the beast still remains to be divined. It has been shown that the United States is the power represented by the beast with lamb-like horns, and that this prophecy will be fulfilled when the United States shall enforce Sunday observance, which Rome claims as the special acknowledgement of our supremacy. But in this homage to the papacy, the United States will not be alone. The influence of Rome in the countries that once acknowledged, acknowledged her dominion is still far from being destroyed. Paul states plainly that the man of sin will continue until the second advent. To the very close of time, he will carry forward the work of deception. And the revelator declares, also referring to papacy, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life. Revelation 13 verse 8. In both the old and the new world, the papacy will receive homage in the honor paid to the Sunday institution that rests solely upon the authority of the Roman Church. Darkness Before Dawn, page 27. When does it happen? When is the image of the beast formed? When the leading churches of the United States, uniting upon such points of doctrines as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce their degrees and to sustain their institutions, then Protestant America will have formed an image to the Roman hierarchy and the infliction of civil penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. Which doctrines are these? For we know 
that it's upon the doctrines that purposely will agree with Protestants. United States uniting upon such points of doctrines as are held by them in common, which these doctrines, which are held in common between Protestant America and purposely. The first one is image worship. In every place of worship, especially for purposely and even for apostate Protestantism, you will not fail to see men bowing down their heads to the image, a character which we see in Babylon, the image worship. The book of Psalms 115 verse 4 tells us, Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. It continues to say, They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusted in them. The second doctrine is Sunday sacredness. Everywhere you'll find it exalting the first day of the week above the seventh, the Sabbath. The third is soul is immortal. When somebody dies, he is not dead. He has some consciousness in it. Then the Catholics will bid the Protestant to go forward and issue a decree that all who will observe the first day of the week instead of the seventh day shall be slain. And the Catholics whose numbers are large will stand by the Protestants. The Catholics will give their power to the image of the beast, and the Protestants will work as their mother worked before them to destroy the saints. But before their degree bring or bear fruit, the saints will be delivered by the voice of God. Spadling and Morgan, page 2. The church appears to be strong arm of civil power, and in this work, Papists and Protestants unite. As the movement for Sunday enforcement becomes more bold and decided, the law will be invoked against commandment keepers. They will be threatened with fines and imprisonment, and some will be offered positions of influence and other rewards and advantages as inducements to renounce their faith. But their steadfast answer is, show us from the word of God our error. The same plea that was made by Luther under similar circumstances. In the movement now in the progress in the United States to secure for the institutions and the usages of the church the support of the state, Protestants are following in the steps of Papists. Nay, more, they are opening the door for the pap papacy to regain in Protestant America the supremacy which she has lost in the old world when she received the deadly wound. Through two great errors, the mortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness, Saturn would bring the people under his deception. While the former lays the foundation of spiritualism, the latter creates the bond of sympathy with Rome. The Protestants of the United States will be a will be foremost in stretching their hands across the gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism. They will reach over the abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power, and under the influence of this threefold union, this country will follow in the steps of Rome in trampling on the rights of conscience. Great Controversy 588 There is a confederacy of three powers which will finish the work of deception. There is a beast with two horns like a lamb, which we call, or which is Protestant America, speaking like a dragon who is certain and exercising the power of the first beast, the papacy. So Protestant America, the dragon who is certain, 
together with papacy, will join hands together in the last struggle for supremacy on the earth. Protestants will throw their whole influence and strength on the side of papacy. By a national act of enforcing false Sabbath, they will give life and figure to corrupt faith of Rome, reviving her tyranny and oppression of conscience. Then it will be time for God to work in might power for the vindication of his truth. Psalms 119.126 says, It is time for thee, God, to work, for they have made thy law void. When our nation, when United States, shall so abjure the principles of its government as to enact a Sunday law, Protestantism will in this act join hands with popery. It will be nothing else than giving life to the tyranny which has long been eagerly watching its opportunity to spring again into active disposition. It will be like it was in the time of Daniel, when the king Nebuchadnezzar made an image, an image to be worshipped, and only three Hebrew boys rejected. They were thrown in the fire, but the fourth who looked like the Son of Man, came to their rescue. This made the king to think otherwise. And lo, the king said, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of fire, and they had no heart, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So it will be when the Sunday worship is enforced by the law, Many will reject that commandment of worshiping it, and instead they will stand with God. While the world will seek to destroy them, they will stand with their God, and at that time, God will deliver them. Then the Catholics will bid the Protestants to go forward and issue a decree that all who will not observe the first day of the week instead of the seventh day shall be slain and the Catholics whose numbers are large will stand by the Protestants. The Catholics will give their power to the image of the beast, and the Protestants will work as their mother worked before them to destroy the saints. But before their decree bring or bear fruit, the saints will be delivered by the voice of God. As God delivered the three Hebrew boys in Babylon, so God will deliver his people also in the last day. The same masterful mind that plotted against the faithful in ages past is still seeking to rid the earth of those who fear God and obey his law. Satan will excite indig indignation against the humble minority who consciously refuse to accept popular customs and traditions. To secure popularity and patronage, legislators will yield to the demand for Sunday law. Those who fear God cannot accept an institution that violates a precept of the Decalogue. On these battlefields comes the last great conflict of controversy between truth and error, and we are not left in doubt as to the issue now. As in the days of Mordecai, the Lord will vindicate his truth and his people. The prophecy of Revelation 13 declares that the power represented by the beast with lamb-like horns shall cause the earth and them that which dwell therein to worship papacy. This symbolized by the beast like a leopard. This prophecy will be fulfilled when United States shall enforce Sunday observance, which Rome claims as the special acknowledgement of our supremacy. Not long the wound in one of the heads of Revelation 13 will be healed. And once the little wound is healed, no man has the right to choose his religion. As Robert Miller says, we must move as quickly as possible to one world government, a one world religion, and a one world 
later it's coming and finally the image of the beast is the apostate protestantism which seeks the civil government power beginning from the united states of america it will proceed to many countries of the world and that will be the beginning of the end events for the people of God. For the people of God, it will be joy seeing those things fulfilling, though it will be a terrible time. But for the people of the world, it's the time that they will start exercising satanic powers against their neighbors. Which side will you stand? What position will you take? Will you stand for Michael the Prince or will you stand for the devil? If you would like to learn more of this, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of this presentation of prophecy each time I upload a new video.